First glimpse of the King's first royal procession. And this Charlotte is that magical, glistening moment. Even though the sun's not shining, the signals the start of Royal Ascot 2023, led by the King and Queen. The new King and Queen, their first here for King Charles's monarch. And I think it gives us that such a sense of history. Whenever you see it, we could be watching this from any year throughout history, couldn't we? But this is a special one this year as we see King Charles and Camilla and also in the first carriage, the Duke of Wellington, the Duchess of Wellington. They're very much among the King and Queen's inner circle, part of a, a tight-knit set. Uh, Charles has spent uh, many a trip in their family estate in Spain and they, Camilla went to the wedding of their daughter, Lady Charlotte in Spain in 2016. So they are in carriage one. And for so many years, talk in the morning of what colour Her Majesty the Queen's hat was going to be. The vote makers this year got involved with what colour the King's tie would be, so we'll try and get a glimpse <laughs> in just a second. But as you say, Francesca, the Queen just loves this, doesn't she? Loves the horse, loves the racing. Yeah, very much as she herself a keen uh, equestrian as well. And uh, It's interesting you mentioned about the, the King's tie, which hopefully we will glimpse soon, because the Queen, the late Queen, was always known for wearing very much one colour, so you could always um, be sure it's going to be either blue or she yellow. She wear bright colour, didn't she? But yeah. one colour, like, I mean, looking at you, Charlie, you've got green and purple, so quite a hard, hard to bet on. But I wonder if, if Queen Camilla's hat might become a thing that is, um, that is a guest or bet on in the future, because she's wearing a, a block colour today, what do we call that, green? Green or ivory, I would say. I mean, it's beautiful, isn't it? It's so effortlessly stylish. Um, just lovely to see them there in carriage number one. And I also find, talking about her and her love of horses, I was reading that she regretfully said uh, to some school children that she didn't ride these days anymore, but she had very excitedly watched one of the foals being born on a camera, so a virtual foal being, you know, born, which I think was a special moment for her. So it's nice that she has that hands-on approach. I'm still not sure what kind of the tie is. Hmm. But what with lilac? I'm not very on this. Colours, Powder blue could be a baby blue. It's something of the pale blue lilac ilk, isn't it? We'll get a, a closer look, I'm sure, in due course as we move to carriage two, Charlotte. So in the second carriage, we have the Princess Royal, Princess Anne there, Mrs. Simon Elliot, Sir Ben Elliot, and Lady Elliot as well. And Mrs. Simon Elliot is Camilla's sister, Annabelle. Now, uh, she is Camilla's close confidant, She's an interior designer herself, and you would have seen her by Camilla's side at the coronation because she played a key role attending the Queen there. And uh, her and her husband had, uh, had a, a long relationship, a friendship with the King and Queen. They joined them on their honeymoon in Balmoral in 2005. She sadly lost her husband, Simon, in March. And she's there with her son, Sir Ben Elliot, Camilla's nephew, and Lady Elliot joining them as well in that carriage. Ben Elliot having a look round, see what was happening ahead. Princess Royal, Ralph, no one loves the score more than her. No, of course, she has ridden winners on flat. And um, ridden them a jump too. Uh, she was, I mean, I mean, she was a, no, she was four, sports woman of the year. She's a major, major player. And you had to, I, when you were chairman of the Interjockeys Fund, you had to be on your metal, didn't you, when your patron was in oh, town? Yeah, I mean, she, she, she cut straight to the chase. <laughs> Put it like that. But no, she's, but she's terrific. Her preparation is quite extraordinary for things like that as we move to carriage three charlotte so in carriage three we have the duke of gloucester the duchess of gloucester the lord bamford and lady bamford as well and uh, the duke and duchess of gloucester they're both full-time working members of the royal family the queen's cousin his grandson to george v and the duchess of gloucester did you know it's her birthday today i did not know that happy birthday to her now they both attend national and international events yep. in support of the king and uh, he the duke of gloucester is one of only five members of the royal family to have attended both charles's coronation and the late queens as well and he was on the balcony for trooping the color at the weekend that slim down balcony we saw where there was only about 14 of them compared to more than 40 back in 2019 and lord and lady bamford he is chairman of uh, jcb 
and she is the founder of Dalesford Organic, that farm shop chain, and they have uh, the estate in Gloucestershire. And she herself is a keen horsewoman, reads oh, racing yes. post every morning. And she's a very successful owner, who we last saw in Epps of Francesca being <laughs> picked up by Frankie. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Frankie. Not an awkward <laughs> moment, wasn't it? <laughs> I'm not sure she was quite expecting that. I mean, you have to expect the unexpected when it comes to Frankie, especially post a big race. Um, but yeah, he lifted her off her, off her feet when uh, Soul Sister won the Oaks in impressive fashion. Now, Carriage 4 is very much Francesca all about racing. It really is. We've got Willie Mullins there with his wife, Jackie. And we've got Crane and Grace Beckett with his wife, Izzy. She's in the uh, cream colour with the bluer hat. But yeah, racing legends in Carriage 4. And Jackie will be absolutely loving this. She loves a, a trip to London and a show and to look around all the sights. Look at the smile as she's holding onto her hat in the wind. She'll be thoroughly enjoying this. Willie on the left there has got two really good chances later today. Yeah, he's got two favourites today. He has had uh, eight winners here at Royal Ascot so far. The first of them was Simonon in 2012, who did the Ascot Stakes Queensland Alexandra double, which was some feat. And like you say, he's got two really fancy runners today. Rafe Beckett, he's had three winners here, and he has got some big chances this week. He's got Angel Blur today and Sam Cook, and Prosperous Voyage, who I really fancy tomorrow. I love it to see Izzy here, as you say. She's a huge part of the Beckett operation in Hampshire. I'm sure the kids will be here at some point this week, too. And Saga today, Brough. How big for the sport would it be if Saga could deliver in the Wolferton later this afternoon in the Royal Silks? I think it'll be very big. Also, it'll be very obvious how involved, sort of physically, the kid would be, rather than just being a figurehead to owner. He's a this year, he's a participant in Alaska, not just a spectator. And how important is that? Just explain how important for the sport after being so spoiled for so many years with Her Majesty the Queen's involvement. How important now to have these two engaged? Oh, the royal imprimatur is the biggest thing you can have, really. And racing is getting get it again, it seems to be. And a winner is the one way to stamp it strongest. I think it's funny, isn't it, with the, with the involvement, because for so long, racing and breeding was the late Queen's thing, and we very much associated her with it, and there was perhaps a bit of an assumption that King Charles wasn't that interested, but I can slightly relate to it, because, for example, my, my parents have trained and bred for a really long time, and yes, I have an interest in what they do, but I suppose I wouldn't really throw myself into it fully until it became my responsibility, so I kind of understand that now... Uh, for Charles and Camilla, they've taken on the racing operation, the breeding operation, and they're responsible for it. So I'm not surprised to see a new level of involvement and interest. But the late Majesty the Queen, most definitely not forgotten here at Ascot. There's a wonderful display on the ground floor of the main stand. If you're coming this week, do come and look at some stunning photographs of the Queen's time here at Ascot. And on Saturday, they've renamed the race in her memory which is a lovely touch by the race course and His Majesty's representative Sir Francis Brook is also the chairman here says this will both honour the late Majesty in perpetuity and maintain the connection with the three jubilees celebrated since the inception of the race which was in 2002 and that's one of the jewels in the crown of the royal meeting on Saturday afternoon with the six furlong group one sprint now called the Queen Elizabeth II Jubilee State which is a nice touch. They will take a left as the winners will the 35 races over the next five days, all live with us on ITV. We'll go through the same hallowed walk under that first tunnel, out the other side, past the coolers and all the water that they put out for the horses, particularly as it's going to get hot this week, and then another left through the tunnel into the paddock where, Charlotte, there is real expectancy around us right now. Yes, you can see everyone's gathered round, haven't they? Leaning in, cameras out to get a glimpse of them, and I think we did wonder, didn't we, how it would feel this year, but there's definitely this air of anticipation, and as I was saying, it is just one of those glorious British traditions 
isn't it, that happens every year and it's wonderful to see it continuing in this way. And it is wonderfully British, you know, I think to a lot of race meetings all around the world and it is the envy of the world because you don't have a royal procession anywhere else and you don't have this level of royal involvement anywhere else and the idea that everybody can come here and stand on the edge of the parade ring and get a glimpse of them and feel close is, is so unique. It's a really special thing. This has been going on since 1825. That's when the first royal procession took place, started by King George IV. And right now we're witnessing a piece of history really, aren't we, with the King's debut meeting as the monarch. Just for the first time he will be about to enter the paddock and it'll be fascinating to just gauge the reaction of the people as they get their first glimpse in the paddock here. As here they come. Some cheers, some applause. Yes, some cheers. I mean, everyone's delighted to see them. You can see they've all started filming this special moment. And I think that's the thing. Everyone who's here wants to be a part of it, wants to share in this. Would it be fair to say there's one couple that the crowd would love to see over the next, well, four more royal processions to come? There absolutely is, isn't there? There are some, uh, some favourite couples, and uh, we'll wait to see the, the Prince and Princess of Wales on the come as well. I'm sure they'll come at some point. Also, because we know that, you know, it's a special event. Kate, fashion-wise, always looks phenomenal, doesn't she? So I'm sure she would love to be here to be taking part in it as well. And as we saw on the weekend, the Trooping the Colours, they come right past our position here. Waving to the crowd. Again at the weekend, another, she docked her hat, didn't she? In a traditional fashion, also to her late mother-in-law too. She did, indeed. And I just think it's, uh, it's wonderful as well to see style-wise, isn't it? When we saw the trooping of the colour and what Camilla was wearing for that, with a beautiful red silk dress. I got a good afternoon from the Princess Royal. Did you? Did you? You were in the good books. I wasn't last year, but that's a whole other story. <laughs> I blame Zara for that one. <laughs> I feel like I want to know the story now. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Later. Ooh. I'm just looking at the horses. A little that, bit of a lively horse. That's strange. <laughs> I'm comparing them to what we're likely to see later. I always thought the horses were an actual breed, and they're not. But the Windsor Greys, are they... I think they, they were, they were selected for ceremonial duties, rather than being a breed for themselves. For their temperament, and of course they used to be named personally by Her Majesty the Queen. Each one would have been named, so we'll see what, uh, what will happen from now. But they're Windsor Greys, and mostly Cleveland Bays as well. And now, the Queen first, and then the King, will be met by Sir Francis Brooke, who I quoted earlier about Saturday's race. His Majesty's representative here at the Royal Racecourse and the chairman, there he is on the left there. A huge week for him as well as we bring in the new era here at Ascot. That was the first Royal Procession of the week and the racing is nearly upon us as well. Let's go out to Adele. really busy up here in the pre-parade ring as you can see plenty of horses to look at and of course the gal the crowd are gathered there on the outside to get a early gl glimpse of these horses as they uh, are starting to get their final preparations their saddling boxes um, are starting to fill up nicely plenty of them are getting their saddles on some of them have already been tacked up they were saddled up in the stable yard and they've started to make their way in as well Mutter Sarbic was one of the ones who was putting quite a show on for the crowd he was on his hind legs boxing with his front feet showing just how well and fresh he is coming into the, the Queen Anne stakes and it won't be long before they start heading down into the main parade room we just haven't seen in spiral she hasn't come in yet can't wait to see her as the most colorful event in Britain's sporting calendar gets up to wave. Starting with a spectacular day on the track, it kicks off with a Group 1 Queen 